So hey YouTube, this is a uh, video tutorial on how to use Ableton Live, this is Live LE, um, to do some DJing. Uh, yeah, this is just a method that I've come up with. I don't know if this is the best way or even a good way. So if you have any suggestions, please, please let me know. I will not be offended. So we're going to delete the, uh, the MIDI in case we have it. And we're going to set up two audio tracks, okay? And uh, you may see just this uh, with nothing here at the bottom. But we're going to go over here and hit this X. It's the crossfader section. Um, this is probably completely obvious to most people, but it took me a while to figure it out because I had nobody to show me. So if you see there's these A and B, and A is on the left, B is on the right, that literally corresponds to left and right on the crossfader. The right, left being A, the right being B, center being equal. So we're going to assign the first audio, to whatever you want to call it, channel as A, and the second channel as B. Uh, and let's see, we're going to load up some songs um, and just load them into the two different channels. Uh, let's see. You see, that one's taking longer to cross because it has to load. So most of these will load. Just, I've been using these songs for the just to practice on this stuff for a while. So what's going to happen? Um, let's just start one. So you're going to click there to start it. You see it's starting here. I'm just going to lower the thing down so you can't hear it as well. Um, this song, you see that has warp on, if you double click on the sample. Um, warp is very important because that allows, you know, like this other song by the Black Eyed Peas here, uh, well that's a bad example. Uh, this one's at 135.99 originally, but it's going to be warped to fit the tempo of 129.99 which is the simple or the tempo of Im this image and heap song, so it's going to fit the tempo of the original song you want. Um, but you can modulate it afterwards, which is why warp is important. Otherwise, that's not possible. Um, so you can tempo shift the songs, which is very good. Also down here, there is a transposition by step, which isn't very subtle. So if you want, you can do a very slow transition. You know, by the sense, of course, you know, it's really, really fast. You want to do it a lot slower than that. But uh, anyway, so you can change the tempo and the pitch, which is very important in DJing. Um, another thing I want to do, it shows you how much time you have left until it runs out. Very important to know. Um, but one of the key things that's very, very nice is even if, like, on a regular DJing software, like Virtual DJ or... Uh, tractor or something like that. It'll show you where the transients are, but usually it won't um, match the transients perfectly, um, even if you hit the sync button. So you as the DJ have to watch when it's coming in and, you know, click it at the right time and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. That's, you know, a skill thing that just some people don't have. This kind of does it for you. Like, I'm just going to click that song just randomly. You know, that was at no particular time, but if we listen in, The beats are already matched up perfectly. You see? So it really takes a lot of the hassle out in trying to actually get the beats perfectly onto each other. And if we start another song, like this one here is again uh, 136.58, but it's being warped to 130. If we start this one, it's still going to be on the same tempo, which is very nice. Um, so that's just, that's the majority of it. Now one thing, or a couple things I'd suggest to make it sound good, under the synth effects, the uh, Sheen Machine, I think what it is, is effectively a, um, a delay, a very weak delay, and then it, on, it affects the delayed signal using a flanger something like that, and you can affect the effects level simply, you know, by this, and there's all the other parameters, I don't really know, I haven't looked at them much, uh, but it just kind of fills out the sound in a nice subtle way without, you know, really sounding like you're using a bad flanger on it. Um, so there's that. Also one thing I like for the transitions is this thing called Fade to Gray. Um, we'll give that a listen here, turn it off first, and, well, 
Here we go. So it kind of fades to a single toned nothingness from which there is no return. No, um, it's actually it's a really nice way to transition into something because it kind of uh, you when you trans slowly transition into it like if I had B set on fade to gray and A as the regular you know full audio uh, when I get to about halfway or so you're only going to be hearing some of the high pitched um, percussion from B so it's a nice way to slowly fade in um, beyond the fade to gray also of course you know an EQ either the three or eight I prefer the eight even though only four are on right now you can turn on five six seven and eight and it's fully customizable however the heck you want it you know whatever um, spectrum's good because it lets you see what's going on with the song you'll see here which kind of helps you choose where you want to accentuate your frequencies or whatnot and I think the spectrum is pre-EQ so it's not going to show whatever changes you make on the equalizer um, there might be a way to make it post EQ. I really don't know. I haven't been using it this long or that long. Um, another thing I like is erosion. It's kind of a digital distortion. Um, uh, so it's just kind of a messier sound, but uh, sometimes it's nice. You know, whatever you want to do. Uh, and I usually set that up on both of the channels, and that's about it. Um, so yeah, there's that's my method for DJing in uh, Ableton Live. Oh, also one thing to mention is all these different things like on the uh, the EQ and the fade to gray. If you have a MIDI controller of some sort, but you don't want to go out and buy a uh, external like you know MIDI mix board, um, you know specifically for DJing because those are you know kind of expensive. But you already have a MIDI controller like I do. Um, for production purposes, uh, if it has any sli slate bleh, sliders or faders or knobs or anything, you can right click and go edit, edit MIDI map. And while you're in here, move whatever knob it is, um, and it'll learn from that surface, the control surface, and be preset to that knob. Um, also, Control M gets you there. Uh, but so that, that's kind of a nice way to set up stuff. So if you wanted to choose one of these. Uh, things and choose the gain as one and the frequency as another you could use it for you know doing a, uh, a filter sweep effect kind of thing um, you know stuff like that so I uh, hope this tutorial was helpful um, if not let me know and I'll try to make it more helpful or if you have any suggestions on how I can DJ better or better methods for doing it please please let me know because I would love to hear from y'all so uh, thank you and uh, enjoy